Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today we're back with Superfilm Support. Remember, superfilmsupport.com. Send your film questions about large format, medium format, developing, or anything like that, and I'll try my best to answer here. This question was uh, sent to me a few months ago, but I've been thinking about how to answer it, and I might do a proper uh, test in the field to show the differences, but I'm gonna talk pretty much in theory here. So this question comes from David. And he says, I have only been using large format for a year. He's got a master's degree that he's gonna start uh, focusing on still life. And he's asking me if he wants to buy a lens for large format, probably uh, a Ronestock Apo 240 or 300. And he wants to explore texture, form, color uh, with the narrative. And he's wondering if how versatile uh, a macro lens is for large format. Can he be used for, you know, portraits or still life only and so on. So he says that he has a Toyo GX and a Toyo 125 VX. So great choice of cameras. And he's asking about macro lenses. So I only have one macro lens for large format and it's actually on this camera. It's a Rodenstock, uh, I think it's here in our N210 and I bought it for uh, very, very little back in the day. Uh, and I've actually been shooting as you see here with this mega macro uh, extension. What I have also used before that might not be um, exactly the definition of macro are lenses like the G Claron, which are made for reproduction. So usually are made, if I'm not wrong, for flat uh, fields. So like to repro do reproductions of uh, art or maps and so on. So they're also very, very sharp and sometimes clinical. So I'm gonna answer the first part of this is, does it work for portraits? So yes, these lenses will work for portraits fine. The major issue is like you said, maybe it's a little bit too sharp for portraits. So like I did a portrait of my mom uh, with the G Claron 305 on eight by 10. And man, that lens, like you can count like either the wrinkles or the pass of time through her skin. My mom's not uh, too young, so you can see you know, her wrinkles and so on. So that, take it into consideration, depending on who you're shooting a portrait of, maybe you wanna diffuse a bit of that sharpness. You can either get like a pro, uh, I think it's pro mist uh, from Tiffin, if I'm not wrong, and you can buy like a quarter or an eighth or a fourth. It's very much used for cinema use, for example, when you're doing digital video and you're like shooting 6K like where I am right now, and you don't wanna see like every wrinkle and everything, you wanna give a bit of like soft uh, rollout on highlights, uh, you, people use these. So maybe you can use that macro lens and then use one of these filters, just uh, just the thing is those filters are really expensive to make sure you can test it. Maybe someone can loan you one if you're in college, maybe someone has it from the audio uh, side of college or multimedia. But yeah, I would say it works. Just be careful of shooting certain people that are maybe a little self-conscious of their aspect or imperfections on their faces or hands or bodies because every single detail will be present if it's in focus. And then uh, I'm gonna say the other way around. If you're trying to do this for macro work, macro lenses probably have better resolution. And this, I'm probably putting my foot in it because a lot of people know a lot more than me. So always remember guys, check the comments below. But if I'm not wrong, eight by 10 lenses, large format lenses are not supposed to cover a ton of resolution because the piece of film, the media is really big. So for example, a 35 mil lens should be sharper because the piece of film is smaller than a sh like an eight by 10 or four by five lens. And I'm saying eight by 10, like they were all like four by five or eight by 10, but you know what I mean, like a lens for large format. So for example, probably, and this is totally my guess, macro lenses are made to be sharper and give more resolution per like square centimeter of film, square inch of film. So they probably uh, are better for that macro work they don't have chromatic aberrations. They probably don't do stuff like that that could happen with other lenses that are not intended for, you know, two by one or two one or three one uh, extensions. So basically I would say if you are gonna do still photography and I'm coming very late for your uh, email, uh, I would get the macro lens. Probably those G Claron will work great for that too and they're super cheap, the 210, 150, 305, 355 are usually pretty inexpensive. They've gotten a little higher in the last couple of years, but they're still very, very good. And they're F9, so a lot of people don't want them because it's like F9, oh, I can't shoot, even though it works fine on four by five and eight by 10, even though I'm by 14. But yeah, I suggest 
if you're shooting macro, get a macro lens like I'm doing right now. This is actually a setup, like I said, I'm using. And if you are gonna be shooting portraits, try to see if you can use a different lens or not try to use some sort of like diffusing filter that will give a little bit less sharpness and clinical look to your uh, pictures. So yeah, I hope that helped, David. I'm sorry for taking so long to answer your question. Lots of questions here. I wanna actually go ahead and test this probably in a video. So I'm gonna favorite this uh, email and come back to it whenever I'm able to shoot like a comparison of a 210 macro with a normal 210 and like scan it properly and show you. Same thing with like a still life, maybe go ahead and do some macro work with this one and a normal lens. So yeah, this was Superfilm Support. Remember, you can send me your questions and this exists thanks to you guys, Patreons or PayPal donations. I'm leaving a link below. But yeah, let me know if you've ever done macro, if you noted, ever noticed like a problem with like the macro lenses in portraiture or normal lenses that are not macro intended use for macro work in large format and maybe you found something I haven't found yet. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. See you in the next one, bye.